Hey guys, I am Brenda Palmer, and I just want to take this time to welcome you to Life in Perspective. If this is your first time being with us, welcome to the party. If you've been here, welcome to season four. This season, we are talking everyday life through the lens of our faith. And I feel like, you know, it's been a minute since I've had the opportunity to just sit here and let you in on what's been happening in my life. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with trending videos, but there's this one video that has me in a chokehold. OK, it's this lady and she's preaching. And then in the middle of preaching, she just has this praise break and she starts singing about the E320 of life. And I feel like I am in my E320 season. And that is inspired by Ephesians 3 and 20, which simply says that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. And if I had to give a definition to the current season I'm living in, it would definitely be that. It would also be Amos 913, because in the message version, it says that you're going to receive blessing after blessing so fast on the heels of each other, your head will swim. And honestly, I feel like my head is swimming. <laughs> like um, this season has been so proving of the faithfulness of God. Like I can't even, I struggle to articulate it. I had no idea that six months ago when we sat in this very room, probably didn't look the same, but we sat in this very room and I shared with you that I was in the middle of a defining moment where God asked me to walk away from my full-time job and pursue him. (laughs) I can't, that's like literally all I can say because the only instruction I had was more of a question and it just said, will you trust me? And now I have a little more understanding of what that looks like and I would identify my current life as full-time ministry in an evangelistic context. (laughs) I feel like I get the opportunity to present Jesus to people, uh, whether they uh, are looking for ways to grow deeper in their relationship with Jesus, or if it's their first time coming. I've, over the last six months, experienced some supernatural growth and influence that I was not prepared for. (laughs) I had absolutely, I I feel like some people create social media pages so they can like get followers. Never, that was never my intent. And it just happened. And I am honored that God would entrust me to steward the lives of people who are looking to grow deeper in their relationship with him. I've met people who are experiencing church hurt and they need to know how to get out of it. How do they move forward? How do they continue their relationship with Jesus? How do they attend another church after experiencing hurt and rejection and betrayal from a church? And I've met people who are like, hey, I just met Jesus and this is helping me on my journey. I feel convicted. I feel like I want to grow. How do I, how do I read my Bible? (laughs) And so I feel super honored. I just, I wanted to share that with you because I didn't know this is where we would end up. And I I find myself oftentimes just sitting and reflecting on how like one step of obedience led to living a life beyond my dreams because I didn't dream none of this. This was not in any of the dreams I had. And yet I found myself so fulfilled and not because of the things, not because of the influence, not because people recognize me or know my name. I feel fulfilled because I recognize that I obeyed God and I'm living in the fruit of that. And I'm sharing that because some of you are walking through a journey or you're right in a moment, a crossroads even, where you're trying to decide whether or not you should follow that thing that you hear Jesus asking you to do. And I want to encourage you with my life and tell you, you absolutely should. Even if it doesn't lead you into whatever it is that you dream about or whatever it is that you desire, obedience is seed for the unimaginable. And I want to challenge you with that. I know sometimes it's hard to take a step into the unknown. That's how it was for me. I just would like to let you know that my stuff is still in a storage. I still am living out of a suitcase. (laughs) I still just am kind of going with the flow. Like I still don't have a consistent income, but yet God provides. Like, ooh, 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 ooh. I got a story for you. I actually got a lot of them. I can tell you about him being a provider. (laughs) Um, But this one particular, like, okay, so I'm in seminary school. 
Child, that's a whole nother story. I don't know. Some of these things that are happening in my life, I just feel like I go to sleep and somebody takes over my life and then they make decisions and then I wake up living in them. Like, that's what it feel like. Because Brenda would not have ever gone back to school. I probably got journals where I wrote, I will never go back to school. Well, never say never. That's another lesson. Never say never. Because the Lord will prove you're never to be a yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> but I was uh I was at home in Chicago and I was actually like filling out stuff for my classes and I was sitting on the couch with my dad and I just was not even out loud in my heart vocalizing like I need to pay tuition <laughs> in like three days and I'm like all right Lord you know I'm gonna sign up for these classes and I'm gonna just you know we gonna figure it out not even 30 minutes later, a rant, like, I don't want to call her a random girl, but she's not like in my inner circle of friends. She doesn't know my life. And she sends me a text and says, Hey, I saw online that you're going to school. She's like, do you need anything? And in that moment, I felt, I felt a crossroads, right? Because ego makes you want to tell somebody who saw you online going back to school, like, Oh no, I'm good. The Lord is amazing. He's guiding this journey. You know, you want to say all the churchy things to make people think that your life is what it's not. And so I just was really honest with her. I was like, I don't need like supplies. I'm going to school online, but I am paying for school out of pocket. And so, you know, like, you know, that is going to be a need and buying books. And she goes, I'm just going to send you a small little something. She's like, anything helps because things always come up when you're going to school. I said, oh, OK, great. I didn't have any expectation. When somebody says they're going to send you something, I think $50. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie to you. I, I think, like, you know, I'm going to slide you 20 25 50 You know what I'm saying? She literally sends the amount I needed to pay my tuition for the month. I, I am learning. I think I wouldn't say I'm learning. I would say God is solidifying that he's the source and everything else is a resource. And if God says something to you, I say this all the time, like the entire earth has to come into alignment with whatever God said. And the crazy thing is, even the way that I know that girl is connected to obedience. A year prior, I'm just minding my business. The Lord tells me to go to this Black Voices event. I'm like, these are a whole bunch of kids, like in college, doing a lot of screaming. And to be honest with you, I was at an all white church. I hadn't been in the context of a whole bunch of black people in one room in a very long time. And I was very overwhelmed. <laughs> but it was the best. It was one of the best experiences I ever had. It's the reason we have come alive because I God gave me come alive. I had no context for what come alive would be, what it would look like, what I should be doing with it. And I go to this event and I meet this girl at this event not knowing that a year later God would use her to sow a seed to ensure that my tuition for school was paid. It's all connected to obedience. And so I I pray that if you don't ever get anything from my life, that you understand the importance of obedience. Literally, like, I just really, I feel like it's now like a muscle. It's like God says, do something. All right, cool. Like, let's just go for it. I don't ever know where it's going to lead. I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know that if God is asking me to do something, he literally is taking care of it. And so I just want to challenge you with that. Whatever it is that God is asking you to do, just trust him and do it. It will produce a fruit. And I know the next thing you're going to ask me is like, how do you know this God? <laughs> because that is the that is the thing that we deceive ourselves with when we are not stepping into obedience we go I don't know if this is just me you're not that smart like I'm not smart enough to give myself the instructions that God is giving me so I think you can remove that I think the other thing is is what you're hearing does it align with the word of God like the literal scripture the text that you read does it the, there's there's a way we experience God's character through the written word is what you feel like God's asking you to do, does it align with that? Does it align with how you've seen him show up in other times? And I think that's a way to decipher it. The thing that helps me most is that if this instruction is causing me to step outside of myself and I have to rely on God to get it done, it's not me. 
I'm not going to stretch myself. <laughs> I'm going to do whatever feels comfortable. I'm going to do whatever feels like I can accomplish it in my own strength. That's how you decipher. Is this God asking me to do this? And I also think like we, we there's a scripture that says like man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. I don't feel like God would punish you for taking a step towards him that you thought was him if it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like because your heart was to please him and there's a grace that covers it if it wasn't him. But nine times out of ten, if you got to step into something or out of something and it causes you to stretch beyond yourself, it's definitely a God thing. And I would say as you continue on the journey of taking those steps, check the fruit. What has been produced in your life since taking that step and fruit doesn't always mean what we identify as blessing because you know sometimes like well if it's going bad oh that wasn't the lord well let's like qualify bad and like is it bad because you uncomfortable is it bad because it's different is it bad because you don't have all the things you want or it doesn't look the way that you thought it was going to look? Like, let's qualify bad first. And then let's say, OK, God, show me you in this. Like, I need confirmation that I made the right decision. and He will do that. It's like obedience and faith go together. You, you need them both. I need faith to obey. And I also need faith to carry me through the step of obedience that I've taken. And so. That's kind of like some of the things that I've been learning. I think one of the things I'm currently navigating in this faith journey is um, being able to embrace that I deserve all the things that God's walking me into. It has been really hard to accept that. I, I like I I know like people experience imposter syndrome normally in corporate America, but I could tell you that in a faith journey, you can also do that because sometimes God walks you into things that feel so much bigger than you that you don't necessarily have to toil for. So sometimes you feel undeserving. And so I want to say like, if you're experiencing good things in your life or a season of favor or a season where God's walking you into your dreams or things that you didn't even think could happen, I just want to say, you deserve it. You deserve it. We are undeserving, but because God grants us favor, we deserve the things that he's walking us into. And if you're in that room, if you're in that space, if you are in that new relationship, don't um, create walls uh, for fear of losing it, that you don't get to enjoy it or you don't steward it properly because you feel like, I don't know if I really got what it takes to sustain this and I don't know if like how did I because sometimes I ask myself like how did I how did I get here like one example of that is like preaching at the potter's house (laughs) I'm still like today like how did I get here like if that feels like I'm a church kid so like if you grew up in church like the potter's house is like Madison Square Garden okay it's like it's like just it's just like if you grew up a church kid, like that's just what it is. I'm still trying to figure out how little old me got there. But it's the grace of God. It was written in his plan. And I even have to check myself and saying, like, I don't know how I got here. Yes, I do. God, the grace of God, the man, the favor of God, like this was all written in his plan. He says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. He knew all of the things that would happen. He knew the things I would encounter. He knew every moment that would get me here. And so I'm not going to act like it's an ambiguous journey because it's not. He had it written out. He has the plans. He knows exactly what it's going to look like, which is why he calls us into steps of obedience. And so, yeah, I just I I really just want to encourage you with that. It's like I always like (laughs) I don't know how I ended up a pastor. Well, first of all, like I literally had this thought about when I was 10 years old. (laughs) Now I was at summer camp and I was 10, y'all, 10. And my counselor, maybe she was like 23, 24. And I know this is a, a, a tough topic, so I'm not making light of the topic. But at 10, so this is 2001, um, or 2000, rather. And she's sharing with me that she doesn't know how to tell her mom that she's like a fr- she's pregnant. And she doesn't know how to tell her mom. And she's asking a 10-year-old, 
how she should tell her mom. And I went home and told my mom, <laughs> like, hey, I, I gave her this advice. Like, I told her that she should just be honest with her mom and she shouldn't hide it from her. But I was 10. And so <laughs> I had that thought the other day because I'm like, wow, like, the there's a grace on my life that even overshadowed my age. There was a wisdom that I carried from God, even at the age of 10, that would give me the ability to speak into something that I didn't even, in my natural mind, had yet comprehended. <laughs> and so it's like, we can always be shocked by where we ended up, like, in our journey. But if we go back and trace the steps, we recognize that God's been preparing us the entire time. And I'm telling you to tell, I'm saying this to tell you, you have everything you need to sustain and steward everywhere God takes you. Don't let fear, don't let the spirit of incompetence keep you from living in and stewarding the moment that God's entrusted to you. We get to go on this journey together. We just going to keep saying yes and keep watching God blow our minds. So I want to pray for you. Lord, we thank you for the lifers. We thank you for my family that's watching this and listening to this. God, I pray that something was said today to help put their journey in perspective. God, I pray that you would give them the courage and the um the faith to be able to step into whatever it is that you're calling them into. God, your desire is that we develop into the person that you created us to be. There's a person that you knew before we were formed in our mother's womb and our lives are designed that we become that person. So God, I pray for any person who's standing right in the middle of their dream, God, and feeling a little incompetent or feeling like they don't have enough or they're even um, paralyzed by the fear that they'll lose it if they make a mistake. God, I pray that you would give them the peace that surpasses their understanding. They may not understand why they are where they are, but God, I pray that your peace would blanket them in their journey and that they can know that they don't have to do it on their own. It's not on them. The weight isn't on them. First Corinthians one and nine tells us God will do this. He's just inviting us into partnership. We get to partner with you in every step of our lives, God. So I pray that that thought alone would just give them the sense of peace and that they would be able to embody joy along their journey. God, I pray that this moment they feel convicted and compelled to step into everything that you've promised them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, you know what I want you to do? Subscribe to this channel right now. <laughs> Share this video, like it, drop some comments, go rate the podcast, all of the above, and tap in because we're dropping new episodes every single week. It's season four, and this is Life in Perspective. We out.